Hello everybody, I'm Sophie from The Makers. Welcome to our poppy needle felting tutorial. Um, thank you to all those who are watching live and um, those who are watching this video again on YouTube. Um, today we're making poppies and I'm going to take you through some techniques uh, using our water soluble paper. We also have a, a video on leaves um, from earlier in the week. So if you like these techniques, you can use some of the same ones again. And um, I'll be taking you through slightly different ways of using them to create these poppies. So you can create a simple poppy just with um, a flat four leaf poppy, or you can create a two layered leaf from two pieces of um, water soluble paper. So I'll show you those two techniques today. Um, and I'll show you what you need to get started. So if you get some of the water soluble paper, we've tested lots of different kinds and um, this is the best one we've found for needle felting. It's, it's thin enough you can get your needle through, and um, but it's not so thin that it sort of tears apart as you felt. So it's water soluble paper. You need some um, felting wool, so you can use wool tops, wool bats. So the wool tops are the long fibers and the bats are the shorter fibers. Either is fine. Um, and you can also mix any extra bits in. We've got some sari silk here, or you can use Angelina fiber or whatever you want to make these poppies. You could also use different colors of wool if you want to make multicolored flowers. And these, again, they're slightly different style with five um, petals and two layers in these as well. You'll also need, um, you can either freestyle a uh, template or you can trace around one of our templates if you have our PDF. So you've got um, two um, different pieces there, one goes on top of the other. Or um, you can use the templates that are in our kit, it's the same as our PDF. Um, tools wise, you'll need a pen or pencil and a pair of scissors for your templates. You can use a felting needle. If we start off with a coarse needle, that's great for doing the um, details and around the outlines. And if you have one, a multi-needle tool and a brush mat are excellent for getting this felt really nice and flat. So if you've got those, great. If not, you can do it all with a single needle, so don't feel like you've got to have those. So while you get those bits together, I'm just gonna check in with the live chat. Say hello to everybody. Hello everybody on the live chat. We've got um, Fenny, Laura, hi Laura, hi, um, another Laura. Um, and Laura's saying, don't forget to give the thumbs up. If you give us all a thumbs up, um, that would be great. And Sandra's done that already. Hi Sandra, hi Diane. Diane says, hi Sophie and the felting groupies. Yes, there's quite a crowd of you now, isn't there? Teresa, hello, and um, Helen, hello Helen. Serena, Donna, and of course, Emma, <laughs> supporting me as always. Pamela, Jackie, Erica, and Lynn. Hello, everybody. And Pamela, I think <laughs> Pamela's watching from Oregon. So it's an early start for you, Pamela, and uh, we're glad to have you here. So um, first of all, I'm going to show you some little techniques for making these templates. So if, you've, um, if you want to create your own template for um, a poppy, I'll show you first of all the simple four petals template. Um, you can make these, somebody once showed me a way where you can put however many petals you want. You can get that many coins, say you want a five petal flower, you could use five um, one pences and put them all on a piece of card and draw around those, which is a really good way of getting a flower. But if you're making a four petaled um, flower, which poppies usually have four petals, there's a way you can make that just with card and a pair of scissors. So if you start off with a square of card, you're going to fold it in half and then in half again, like that. And then if you take a pair of scissors, and I'll draw this on first, 
so what you want to do is have a sort of a semicircle that cuts off all of the corners of the card so I'm just going to switch to the other view so I've just drawn on there so I've cut I've drawn this sort of circle on there semicircle and I'm cutting out all of the corners two three with that circle and if you cut those three corners off that when you unfold it you have a nice flower shape so if you were making a two layered flower you would make one um, template and then one slightly smaller you see it just fits inside there and you can just twist that a little bit and then you get a lovely layered flower effect So that's one way of um, making your templates. And if you're making these sort of simple poppies, they usually just have sort of one four layer template, just like that. If you wanted to make these type of poppies where it's got two layers, so there's two separate pieces that we can make here, um, and they are joined together by felting them together with the black part. So as you add that black wool, you felt through both layers and that joins them together. And then if you want to make the two layer petal, you will need two um, templates like that. So if you want to make those, you can still make them by cutting out the card. So I've got one here. It's almost like um, a bow tie shape. So it's got these little bits that go in in the middles and that's what gives you the definition on those petals. So that bit there, that bit there. So you can do that by again, this time you're going to start with a rectangle because you've got that slightly elongated bow tie shape. Fold it into quarters again. And this time you're going to cut off three corners again, but it's a slightly different shape. So I'm starting right in the corner here and then I'm cutting off a big part of this corner and then I'm coming around and stopping halfway along this part of the card. So just working my way around that and coming halfway. So that halfway point is where the, the sort of middle of the bow tie part ends up. we open that out there's your little bow tie shape so I've got two of those now and again one slightly smaller than the other and again you rotate it to create that final two layered poppy shape so you can make those yourself at home or as I say they're in the instructions in our kit I'll just quickly open up the kit show you what we get inside so they're all packed in lovely um, gift boxes if you want to buy one for a friend this is our poppy kit which makes five flowers. You've got those instructions inside. All our instructions are step-by-step -step photographic instructions. So you literally follow one step at a time all the way through to make your poppy. And also in our kits, you get a basic guide to needle felting. So it tells you all a little bit about each type of tool, um, materials, a few techniques, and a few little extras you can get, such as the beeswax balm, silk clay. Um, the stamens are really useful for these um, poppy flowers. And we do all sorts of other things like subscription boxes, etc. If you really want to, um, if you get really into felting and you want us to post your fluff every month, we're very happy to do that. So also in our kits, you get these new wool mats. Um, so they're eco-friendly, they com completely biodegrade. Um, they don't last as long as our earth mats, but it's good to get you going. Um, in the poppy kits, um, inside here is the Angelina fibre if you want to make a sort of sparkly poppy. Um, like these guys here. You can just see them sparkling away. And also in there are some of our amazing no-sew brooch backs, which I'll show you later. 
you get four felting needles in the poppy pack so you've got spares if any break you've got all your lovely wool colors and underneath is your water soluble paper so you've got everything that you need all in one box and um, people love these for taking on holiday etc because you've got everything you need in one place so if you've made your templates or traced a template or drawn a template then we're ready to get started so we've got this lovely uh, water soluble paper obviously if you're making a um, if you've cut out a template you can trace either around it or you can put it underneath and just trace over it and then we're ready to begin so I'm going to make the two um, petal kind that you get in our kit there so I'm going to start off on the bigger petal because bigger is always easier um, I'm going to use, so in your kit you would get a poppy red, but you can mix these fibres together. There's also some um, of a slightly more orange colour in the kit, but today I'm going to use a little bit of our deep red to mix with this fibre, and a little bit of our lovely carded sari silk as well, just add a bit of richness. If you've got other things at home you might want to use those. If anybody's got any ideas on the live chat then let us know. So I'm mixing these by hand, teasing it apart and laying the fibres flat back on top of each other. So teasing it apart like that and laying it flat back on top of each other. So you get those lovely kind of streaky fibres running through. So you can probably just about pick that up on the camera there. You can see these little strands of the sari silk running through. So I'm going to take a good size pinch of that. I'm going to try and cover one um, petal in one go. So I'm covering the whole of one side there. And I'm just laying that wool on. I want it to completely overlap that petal. And I want it to sort of stray across into the middle there as well. That will help it join to the other petal when we do the other side. And I'm going to go around the outlines with my needle. Now, you cannot see the outlines because the wool is over the top of them, but you know that they're there. So you can check underneath where the outlines are and just dab along them. Like that. So I'm drawing in the outlines first with my needle. So can you see that outline all around the edge? I've tacked the fibres in place and they've pushed through into the earth mat below. And that means that I can get a nice neat edge when I fold these fibres back over. They're tacked into place. So you can see you get a nice kind of clean edge there. And I'm just folding those fibres over and um, stabbing back onto those. So if you have one of these seven needle tools, you can be quite quick with your single needle and just get those fibres tacked in place, held down so that when you go on with your seven needle tool, um, they'll stay in the place that you want, but they'll get felted down really fast. So I'm going to go on and do the other side now. similar thing on the other side so it's a mirror image of that side stabbing around the outlines first and then you will fold those edges over so we've got um, a busy day here today at the makers headquarters we're um, packing lots and lots of kits for handmade fair workshops which are happening in a couple of weekends time um, so there'll be more details about those coming soon And in September, we've got a slight um, change to our live stream program. So where we have been at three o'clock each um, time we're on and a few different days of the week um, from September, we'll be on. I'll show you from 
um, one o'clock every Tuesday on YouTube. So you always know you can find us one o'clock on Tuesdays. We're then going to replay that uh, video live with the chat on Facebook on Thursday evening. So if you're more of an evening person, um, you can still get that live feel and there'll be um, lots of people online watching at the same time. So that's a little change to our schedule from September. So the first one will be the 1st of September, which is our subs box um, unboxing, which our subs box for September are the otters. Um, and we've got an autumn fairy for our fairy box. This is August's sunflower fairy. And we've got the surprise box. Um, for those of you who've been missing the seaside um, this year, um, the surprise box is um, a seaside theme. So I hope you enjoy those and we can't wait to see what people are going to make from them. There is a little um, hidden treasure in there as well. So you get a nice surprise. So there we go, we've got the leaf done there. So I just felt it all over that. If you've got a seven needle tool and a brush mat, um, now's the time to use them. Um, some people the other day were saying they put them on their earth mats so they don't make so much noise because they can be quite noisy, these seven needle tools and brush mats. So I've put my brush mat down on first, then I've put my wood soluble paper with the wool on and then I've got my seven needle tool and I'm really gonna squash those fibres down very stress relieving this part so you can see the difference now now I've used that seven needle tool this part here is really quite fluffy still you can see the surface is, has got a lot of loose fiber on and then on this part much much more felted down and that's after only a few stabs and on the back you see there's lots more fiber coming through onto the back of that water soluble paper looking at the back is quite good because you can see any sort of spots where you might need to do a bit more felting so i'm just gonna felt those bits a bit more and if you've got any kind of gaps or holes you can always add a bit extra so I've got a little bit missing at that that side there just add a little bit more wool on top so you can use your single needle tool on a um, brush mat as well and you can also use a three needle tool if you have one of those just for these tiny bits of detail. And there we go. Fixing that down a bit further. I've got stray Angelina fibre in there as well. Gets everywhere. <laughs> um, Alicia, who some of you may know, she said her her um, husband is a builder and he even found Angelina fibre at the building site where he was working the other day. <laughs> It was on him and on what he was working on as well. So it really does get everywhere. So there we go, first set of petals done. So I'll just show that quickly again on the second set of petals. So you're completely covering the um, outline. Then you're using your single needle to stab those fibers in around the outline, folding them over, and then same on the other side. So this is my mixed fibre that I'm using. Laying it over the whole petal, stabbing around the outline. And if you're making poppies, um, people often are making them to sell around this time of year. Um, this is a really quick way to do it, much quicker than crocheting or um, knitting poppies, is to make some needle felted ones. And if anybody was part of creating them for the centenary displays, um, it was amazing to see the variations of all different needle felted, knitted, crocheted poppies. They completely covered the um, clock tower in Nailsworth with these poppies. It looked absolutely amazing. 
if you want to make your own mini version at home you could use um, something like one of our wire wreaths we do do a, a wreath base pack so you can cover your uh, wreath with wool um, you could put any colors that you want onto it we've got a couple of different examples there but you could cover it in say green and then just completely cover your wreath with poppies to make your own poppy wreath so I'm just going to add a little bit more wool to that and then I'll check in with the live chat while you guys finish your petals and there we go two petals ready to go I will show you neatening up the edges um, in a moment so don't worry if they're not super neat in fact you might not want them super neat anyway <laughs> so I just say hello in the live chat again now um, hopefully everybody can see it all right it looks a little bit pixely um, so just let us know if you can't see it I'll see if I can fix it Oh, and Jackie Smith's here. <laughs> and Maria. Hi, Maria. <laughs> and Pamela's asking, because I mentioned about using pennies for um, the petals. It does work with any coin, Pamela. So if you haven't got pennies in your country's currency, <laughs> you can use um, whatever coins you can get your hold of. Laura says, I've drawn around a round tea light candle for the simple poppy. Perfect size. That would make a nice, good size um, poppy. That, that's a good idea. And Helen's making a purple poppy today for the animals. Oh, that's for the animals who give their lives in war. So that's really nice. That's lovely to share that, Helen. But Erica says, oh, oh, no red in my stash. Well, you can make whatever colour poppy you like. I've seen yellow ones. Um, you can get white poppies, pink poppies. I've, I've just moved house and in my garden, um, it's, a, it's a real surprise moving house because you never know what's going to pop up in your garden. But I had poppies that were flamingo coloured, this exact colour in the garden so then they were absolutely massive. They were this sort of size. So they were, that was brilliant see them pop up um, <laughs> Pamela says what do you call flowers who are uh, BFFs best friends forever um, and they are buds <laughs> thank you Pamela and Southport hello Southport love these flowers and um Pamela says poppy varieties bloom in single or double blossoms in a range of colours. White Iceland poppy is a winter hardy in the US. Pink, yellow, orange, red, purple. That's it. <laughs> Great. And Helen says, oh no, now I have to make a flamingo one. <laughs> You'd send us a photo of it when it's done, Helen. That sounds amazing. So we've got our um, petals created now. So the next step is to cut them out. So again, when you're cutting out on this water soluble paper, you don't need to go too close to the wool. You can just be quite rough as long as you're cutting off all the excess of the paper, because if you don't cut off that excess, you, it goes all gooey and awful when you s dissolve it away because it doesn't completely dissolve. It leaves this slight residue in the, paper in the um, wool sorry so if you've got a lot of excess it leaves a lot of residue you end up with a gooey mess so something like that is absolutely fine so just cutting them out and with the edges even the wool edges you don't have to be super perfectionist if you if you like the kind of looser look that's absolutely fine but if you do want to refine them a little bit more I can show you a couple of little tricks and um, 
one of which we used on the leaves on Monday as well. So if you want to define in between your petals, you can take your felting needle and instead of stabbing downwards, you stab on a low angle. So I'm almost going sideways into the wool here. I'm really kind of pushing those fibres in in that, in that bend between the leaves. And this doesn't just work for, you know, flowers and flat things. You can also use it on, um, let's see if I've got something that would work. So say on a um, butterfly, if I wanted to move that line between the wings, I can do the same by just stabbing upwards with my needle. You can see it's getting more of a curve in it there. So it's a really good little trick for adjusting things so it's gone from a straight line to a slightly curved line so it's a great way of moving things around even once they've been felted on and if you wanted to move the little dots around especially good when you're making sort of needle felted eyes on creatures and things again you can use that that trick just using that needle on a low angle to push those fibers in those directions So that's a good way of getting those bits in between the petals a bit neater. And if you want to make the around the edges neater, you can hold the um, poppy between your thumb and finger. It's a good trick when you're doing ears and things like that as well. Just hold it between your thumb and th finger. Put your needle there, but past um, your finger so you don't actually stab yourself in the finger. Saying that, it still happens. <laughs> <laughs> just do your best to avoid your fingers and then just pushing those fibers around so as i push the needle around the edges it just smooths off those fibers and can be quite good for sort of getting them all to mesh with each other it's quite good if you're making a brooch or something that you want to be quite hard wearing if you spend a little bit of time doing that um, before you soak the paper away it really helps So you can see that side there. Just been doing it a tiny bit, but it's already looking a bit smoother than the other side. There's the difference. So again, it's not completely necessary, but if you just want to finish things off, it's good. So you've got your two sets of leaves now. So I've got my smaller set for the top, larger one for underneath, or you might just have a single layer. So if you want to join your two layers together, when you put that um, black spot in, in fact, I haven't got any black wool, just have a little rummage. So when you put your black spot on, this is what's going to join the two layers together. So you go quite deep, use a coarse needle and go quite deep. So you're really working that black spot through both layers. And if you're joining it together properly, you should start to see those black fibres coming through on the other side. So that you know that you've definitely going through all two layers there. And the other trick when you're joining things together if you always um, stab things from one direction, so if you imagine I'm stabbing from right to left, I go like that and like that and like that and like that, I'm always stabbing in the same direction, that bit of wool that you're trying to join on or whatever you're trying to join on, you're gonna, it's gonna pull out really easily because it's, it's only stabbed in one direction. But if you were to do some stabs from that way and some from opposite directions, so you're coming from a different direction, those will lock together and make a really strong bond. So you're going to stab from all different directions and make a really strong bond on that poppy. So you can see there you've got your two layers kind of joining together there. 
and on the back you've got your black fibers coming through so you know it's making a strong join now i'm going to show you all the different kinds of poppies you can make we um, had a poppy making event and we're making these poppies to sell um, in aid of charity so these are some of the few that were left overs from that and um, we had loads of people coming in all different ages old and young and um, we had families coming together and it was really nice I think that was actually when Emma just started working for, for us so you've got your double layered poppies we've got poppies with lovely black um, marks coming from the center so they're sort of radiating out from the center which looks really pretty this one's also got a round ball in the middle so i don't know if you can see that but it's raised from the middle and i'm going to show you that in a moment we've got three petal poppies they don't always have to have four petals this one's um just a flat poppy so a four petal flat poppy and what else have we got and some of them are just sim simple two petal ones so they all look great don't they? so you can get quite addicted to making these poppies and in all different kind of combinations and shapes and just oh yeah that's one so that's got tiny petals in the middle as well i thought that was really cute so lots and lots of different ideas there for making the poppies and here's one I'm going to show you how to do as well. So there's a, can you see that ring of um, yellow there? So this has been done, it's got a bit of um, a dragon wool, so that's the multicoloured wool, but you could use any sort of green or mix some colours together around there. And then it's got some of our um, yellow sari silk, so it's just glittering slightly in the centre and then it's got the black right in the middle as well so there's a few different layers to that so if you want to build up some layers like that um, I'll just grab a bit I think I'll use a bit of a green shimmer as the as the sort of outer bit so I'm just going to put a really fine dusting of this one and you might choose to do a completely different design at home Sure you're already thinking of all the different ones you could do so I'm just putting a little bit of that green shimmer just a little dusting around the outside and again just using my needle just to push fibers in a certain direction and then grab a little bit so this is the carded sari silk so if you use too much of this in one go like if I was just to roll a ball from that and put it in the middle of my poppy I'd probably break my needle going through that because it's quite dense but if you just use a tiny wisp of it so I'm just pulling off a very thin piece like that and then I'm just going to stab that into place so I'm going to start with one end I've got that fixed down and then I'm going to use my other hand to guide the fibres in a circle as I felt. So just working it in. One hand is bringing the fibres around and the other one stabbing them into place. And I've just remembered, Emma, that I think your mum came along to one of those poppy making um, days as well. So that was lovely to have your mum here too so there we go so you've got your nice little circle of um, yellow in amongst your kind of greeny background so I'm just going to give that a quick go with the seven needle tool again that will really help to kind of bond all those layers together and again you can see the green coming through slightly on the back there so you know that they're fixed together really well and these are actually if you want to needle felt with younger children so we say all our kits are suitable at age 10 and up but if you if you have a child who's interested in needle felting and um, they want to have a go a flat project like this is really good because they're much less likely to stab themselves well it's good for all of us really but they're much less likely to 
stab themselves um, than with a, if you were holding something in your hand. So if I was making this um, felting needle holder and I was holding it in my hand, I could easily go all the way through and stab myself, especially when you're making smaller items. So a flat piece is really good because you're you're just stabbing into the brush mat or into the um, earth mat or whatever you're using as a mat um, and not yourself, hopefully. <laughs> So the brush mats are, um, they're a bit more um, expensive, but they are a good investment. We do do large and small ones. So if you're making um, big pictures and larger areas of, of felt, um, the large ones are a good investment. And they do, they last a long time. They are plastic, which we, we don't like so much, but they, because they, they're not a disposable plastic, this, you know, you can have one for years and years and years and it will never fall apart. They're rock solid. Um, and you can clean them as well if you've got a carding brush you can use that to clean your brush mats so i'm just starting at one side of the brush mat and just working to brush all those fibers down and through and the best bit about doing this is you end up with <laughs> all sorts of colors on your carding brush as well so you can see it's getting a lot better and then you've got extra wool for making other projects with as well somebody was talking about felting with their tumble dryer fluff the other day <laughs> which i thought was a great idea lovely so if you're using anything like angelina fiber now's a good time to put that into the middle of your flower as well you would need to um, mix it with a little bit of wool to help it stick I'm being quite um, cautious with the amount of angelina fibre I'm using. And you can mix it with a little bit of wool. That'll help those fibres stick down. And you can felt those into place. And then I'm just going to show you the next part. So once you've um, got all your fibres felted into place, I've actually covered up that little circle a little bit, so I'm going to take those off. When you've got those all felted into place, and that's how easy it is to undo something if you don't like it. And there's the circle back again. You need to now soak your water-soluble paper. So you're going to dissolve it in water. So a um, glass of water or under the tap. And the idea is just to dissolve, just to soak it and get it wet and then um, let it dry. So you're not trying to like wash all of the water soluble paper away because it does leave that slight residue, which gives it a little bit of a kind of um, stronger finish. And the other thing about that is you can let it um, dry in a certain position and that, that residue from the paper helps it to stick. So I've got my glass of water. I'm just going to dip that in literally just getting it under the water a couple of seconds and already you probably can't um, see but the paper's dissolving before my eyes this paper dissolves so fast if you even sneeze on it <laughs> which happened in a workshop it it disappears even with a sneeze so we had this lovely kind of lacy piece of water soluble paper gets dissolved by all sorts of things tea sweaty palms <laughs> So there you go you can be quite rough with with these um i'm just going to squeeze a bit more water out but you can see i'm scrunching it up you can be quite rough they won't fall apart as long as you've completely um, attached those layers together look what a mess it is but i'm going to undo it and there's your lovely poppy inside so i'm just going to press that on a paper towel first of all get a bit more of the moisture out so you can just you could do it between old towels sometimes a little bit of the color comes out of the poppies out of the wool so you might not want to do it on your best white tea towels but um, an old towel is great I've got my poppy there and then okay this ignore the water in this glass but if you wanted to shape your poppy while it dries get a glass without water in 
put a little bit of kitchen towel or a tissue or something in the top of it and then sit your poppy inside so I'm just going to separate those petals a little bit and you can kind of pinch them especially the middle ones to give them a little bit more shape and then the outside ones you can just pull if I just show you that close up just pull them back. so I'm just pulling this is the bigger outside petals and I'm just pulling them apart slightly so I'm just stretching the outside edge of it and doing that gives it a little bit more shape so there we go just stretching that outside edge you can see it because it just gives it this kind of cr slightly crinkly effect which is really lovely because it looks just like leaves and the last thing to do if your flower still looks quite flat so I've got the sort of shape of the petals a little bit but the flower overall is quite kind of floppy if you take the flower and put it on top of your hand so I'm making a circle like that with my hand and then push I'm just making that circle a little bit smaller push the poppy into the circle so I'm kind of stretching it into the right shape now like that and you see it's a lot more shaped the middle is sort of sunken in and the edges around the outside are a bit more shapely I'm just going to fold that paper towel a little bit to hold its shape. Sit your poppy inside and leave it to dry like that and you'll end up with a beautiful shape poppy. It's getting to that time of year when we need to put our radiators on again so that they're always brilliant for having lots of um, flowers drying along the top of them. And there you go, there's your poppy. So I'm going to show you the um, brooch backs and a couple extra details if you want them in a moment. I'm just going to check in with the live chat again. Emma says, I love the flamingo. It makes a beautiful shade in sunsets if you do a 2D picture. Well, it worked for me when I did that. I, th I think I know the one you mean, Emma, and it was beautiful. You've also made a wonderful range of flamingo coloured felties. And Helen says, yeah, everything except the flamingo. <laughs> well, we've got a flamingo tutorial, Helen. <laughs> um, Fenny said, lots of tips. Thanks. Oh, that's good. And then Pamela's got a tip too. A folded piece of cardboard will help save your fingers in tight sideways quarters. So I think this refers to going around the edges of the petals. Um, if I grab a bit of cardboard like that, you can put the petal in between and then put the needle into the cardboard and then you're much less likely to stab yourself. Which is very sensible. I do like a little bit of adrenaline felting without the card but um, you can also use two business cards clamped together to do the same trick with the um, petals so that is a great tip. Thank you Pamela. And Emma says another little tip for the edges of your shapes when dissolving the paper just run your finger around the edge and felt once you have oh sorry around the edge of the felt once you have soaked it then squeezed it out. This just blends in the last little traces of PVA residue, making the last little traces disappear. That's a great tip. Thanks, Emma. So if you are taking your dissolved um, flower or poppy, this has actually started to dry already, but I'm just running my finger just around the edges like that. And you can really smooth them off. That's a good tip. 
<laughs> and it's Emma's uh, work work anniversary tomorrow. So happy anniversary, Emma! <laughs> well done for making it through. Yeah. And water soluble paper is also fantastic to use to make snowflakes. Many people are now starting to prepare their festive felting projects. So we already have a tutorial on our website of how to make the snowflakes. I wish I had one to show you. But if, if you've ever made snowflakes from paper, um, cutting them up, you know, folding the paper and then cutting it, similar to what I did for the template, we you can also use that to make a snowflake. And um, I was so happy when I found that. <laughs> so you can create it from the water soluble paper cutting it in just the same way as the paper and then you can felt all the bits in between and there is a tutorial on that on our website already but i am going to do a, a um, video tutorial on that later in the year as well so look out for that and laura says more thumbs up folks thank you laura you're keeping me reminded today <laughs> and if you want to, if you're not subscribed to our youtube channel and you already um want to this is your first video then um subscribe now and you get notifications you can set notifications for each time the video is coming up <laughs> we're getting lots of thumbs up <laughs> that's great so if you want to take these poppies further if you wanted to make a big poppy for instance it's all exactly the same techniques they do end up a little bit more floppy because you're working with sort of bigger bits of water soluble paper and bigger bits of wool um you can put some wire inside them um i should have brought my other poppy through but there's one um you can put wire inside the petals around the outside so you can actually kind of pose the petals like that and they stay like that um, if you've been to shows we always have it um, on the show stand so you can see it there hopefully there'll be more shows soon <laughs> and we're doing lots of live shows online so um, watch out for our involvement in them we've got um, the creative craft show live is uh, next weekend 5th and 6th of September and also the online wool show is the same weekend we we're involved with that doing workshops um, the Creative Craft Show Live, we're doing a doll making tutorial. So if you haven't seen any of our doll videos yet, that's a really good one to watch. And then the weekend after that, we're involved with the Handmade Fair. So we'll be um, running big Zoom workshops for them. So look out for more details of that. Um, you can also, um, if you want to make leaves for your poppy, so they look great with like a little leaf behind them. I think there were can't find it but I will show you how to make a leaf so poppy leaves are sort of elongated um, they're a little bit actually like an oak leaf that kind of shape so just draw yourself a kind of elongated leaf shape like that oh my goodness I must have dripped water you can watch this water soluble paper disappear before your eyes now just going to draw over that with pen there you go so you can see that I promise I didn't sneeze on it <laughs> that's just some drips from the poppy I promise um, but you can see that you can see how it dissolves and you might even be able to watch it happening these craters kind of appearing but that's that's if you ignore the holes that's your basic kind of leaf shape for a poppy you can fill that in with green in exactly the same way as we did before and then you can um, attach that behind the poppy so it's got a lovely extra bit of decoration which looks quite nice um, final steps of your poppy once they are completely dry if you were watching the leaves on Tuesday, you know how much I love these no sew brooch bags. So it looks exactly like a safety pin when you look at this part, but it doesn't have that little circly thing. So that means you can take your no sew brooch bags, you can poke it into your the back of your poppy. And then just keep going all the way around. You want to take at least a sort of centimetre of the poppy with the with the pin. 
and then just keep going all the way around you've got instant brooch back yay so if you're making these poppies to sell that's a real time saver um, and you get 20 brooch backs in a pack so they really keep you going and if you want to make lots of um, poppies and flowers we do have We do have um, pick and mix jars at the moment. So we sell them as empty sweetie jars for storing your wool in. You might see that I've got some here. We like to keep all our wool in sort of separate colours and organise them like that. Um, I've got them at home as well. Um, but we've, we're doing these sweetie jars full of wool as well as a special at the moment. So we've got a rainbow mix. This one's all tops. All the different coloured poppies you could make from that. In fact, it should be called a poppy mix you've got your purples your yellows your reds your oranges and your greens for the leaves as well so that's our rainbow um, sweetie jar mix and then we also have if you want to make some landscapes to put your poppies in we've got a landscape mix so this is all different kinds in there we've got um, a few sort of um, uncarded wools so you get a lot of texture it's great for um, walls and um, tree trunks and things like that you've got some neps in there so they're like little tiny bits of specks of color which is great if you want to do a whole field of poppies each of those is like a little speckle on the field of poppies and then you've got all the colors you could possibly want to make sort of stone walls and skies and clouds so that's our landscape one these are limited edition um, but you can get the empty sweetie jars from us as well so you can create your own so thank you for watching the needle felt poppy video. I hope you enjoy making your needle felt poppies at home. And I'm just going to check in with the live chat before I go. But thank you all for watching. And um, remember in September, remember, remember September, our make alongs, the makers make alongs are Tuesdays at one o'clock and then repeated again Thursdays at seven o'clock on Facebook. So YouTube is Tuesdays at one. Facebook is Thursdays at 7. So we'll see you there in September. And thank you all for watching. And just check in with the live chat. Um, Southpaw says, do you have to use water-soluble paper? You don't have to. The water-soluble paper means you can have a nice thin base and it gives a little bit extra strength to your poppies. But you can do it without as well. You just usually have to use a little bit of a thicker layer of wool just to give it that strength. And um, oh, a f fact from Donna: if you, if making poppies from for Remembrance Day, don't forget that the leaf should be placed at eleven o'clock. Ah, oh, there we go. I didn't know that. And Erica says, thank you so much for this great mate. Your pins are great. I gave the ones that I have to sell. I gave away the ones I have to sew on. Ha ha. <laughs> That's it. You, you will never. Uh, when we sell these, it shows that they come with a little um, a little card that says, this no sew brooch back will change your life. And it's true. They really will. Um, oh, Erica says, is there a bat? jar oh we should do a bats jar blacks and greys and browns that's a great idea might have to do that erica kind of halloween selection and then um thanks from fenny thanks from faith bye diane thank you laura and laura and fenny bye fenny and um lynn really enjoyed it thank you erica thanks we'll pop over and sandra thanks and southport thank you all thanks for joining and goodbye